Back home in Arizona, we're past Labor Day, so get ready for the September stretch in the National League West. D-backs, the youngest team in baseball. Got even younger today, more September call-ups, including first-timers Peter O'Brien and Socrates Brito. Giants, conversely, have 40-year-old Tim Hudson on the mound tonight against Chase Anderson. It's the D-backs and the Giants right here on Fox Sports Arizona. And greetings from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Bob Brenly off again tonight. Steve Berthume, Luis Gonzalez along the way. Game two of this three-game series against the defending World Series champion Giants. Tim Hudson is 40 years old now, says he'll probably retire at the end of this year. So Gonzo only might get our last look here tonight at Hudson for his career. And that's a good thing for the Diamondbacks because he has been really hard. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he's a crafty guy. He's come through a lot of injuries here in the last couple of years. But what he has done well is pitch well against the Diamondbacks. 14 starts, 9-2 and two record. He's been very effective, pitches well in this ballpark. Very tough to beat here. And you can see a chase field, 5-1 and one with a 1.59 ERA. Just back from injury, he'd been working out of the bullpen, but Hudson returned to the rotation tonight to take the start that was scheduled for Ryan Vogelsong. Chase Anderson Gonzo, what have you seen from him last three starts since he was down in the minors for about 24 hours? <laughs> well, I tell you, I think that was a big wake-up call for him because sometimes guys tend to get a little bit comfortable with their stuff. He, he went down and really didn't go down. He came right back up 1-0 with a 2.55 ERA. He's pitching a little bit more effective and going after hitters. A busy day in the transaction column for the Diamondbacks. We welcome back Yolise Chassin, Alan Webster, and some new faces as well. Jody has the latest on that. And then it's first pitch, the D-backs and the Giants on Fox Sports Arizona. All right, man. is brought to you in part by Cox Gigablast. How will you live the gig life? By Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic herb butter. 
Jared Zaltzalamakia catching Chase Anderson tonight. Giants and Diamondbacks game two of this series here from Chase Field. And yes, more September call-ups today. Jody Jackson with you. The final set of call-ups, according to CBO, Tony LaRussa. Now the Diamondbacks get up a bunch of guys who have already seen time in the major leagues, including left-handed reliever Andrew Chafin, who has been sorely missed in the bullpen. But let's take a look at the complete list. Julius Chassin, he will rejoin the starting rotation and make up a six-man rotation at some point soon. Jamie Romack, a versatile infielder, outfielder off the bench. Alan Webster will be a long man in the bullpen. Meanwhile, Socrates Brito and Peter O'Brien are called up for the very first time. They will see their first major league action at some point. They are not in the starting lineup today, but Peter O'Brien, you may remember from spring training, serious power, hitting cars over at Talking Stick at Salt River Fields, and so we will see how that power plays at some point here in the majors. Exciting times for this club as they evaluate their young players. Yesterday, the Diamondbacks offense jumped all over Mike Leak early in the game. Timely hits, home runs. We'll see if they can do it again tonight. This time to Tim Hudson, the veteran. Always comes in from the bullpen before each start with a towel wrapped around his neck and look at all his fellow D-backs pitchers. They all have the Chase Anderson towel a sign of solidarity in the Diamondback dugout after an impressive win for the D-backs yesterday to open up this three game series with a 6 1 win over a Giants team that is scrambling for every win it can get as they chase the Dodgers division lead. Taking another long final turn through the NL West to close out the years. Chase Anderson now sans towel takes the mound. He is your Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the D-backs. His fourth start since he was briefly removed from the rotation and assigned to the minor leagues. And since he's been back, the results have been mostly encouraging. Here's the Giants' Matt Duffy. He's going to throw strikes on the zone, um, get you to put the ball in play. Um, you just got to, like any other pitcher for me, you just got to get him over the middle of the plate and make a mistake and um, hopefully get the ball up and, and try to get the barrel on it. Numbers on Chase, they are not as definitive as they might suggest. He was very effective through the middle of June. Then that rough patch, including a brief DL stint as he seemed to fatigue. But Gonzo unbeaten in three starts since he was back in the rotation August 23rd. Yeah, and I think one one important thing for Chase Anderson to know, his defense is one of the best in the league. So he's got to go out there and just pitch aggressive and let these guys make the plays behind him. I think in the past he got caught up with trying to nibble around the plate, and that ended up getting him in trouble. 
number 16. A lineup for Bruce Bochy, San Francisco Giants, brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Well, leading off, Angel Pagan out in center field. They get Joe Panic back today after yesterday pinch hitting. Duffy hitting third. The All Star Posey hitting cleanup, followed by Marlon Bird, Brandon Belt, Crawford, Blanco, and today's pitcher, Hudson. Tim Hudson on the mound. A 40 year old veteran in what he thinks will be his final season in the big leagues. Angel Hernandez is our plate umpire tonight. Strike one to Angel Pagan, and we are underway in downtown Phoenix. A hundred one degrees outside Chase Field. The nice cool, comfortable 78 inside the ballpark. Pagan 264 and one home run. He's had only 20 extra base hits all year. Angel Pagan, a pair of hits yesterday, including a double. He also struck out twice. Called strike three. Struck out to lead off the ball game last night against Patrick Corbin. Same tonight against Chase Anderson. Okay, look at the Diamondbacks around Chase Anderson. Our mid first bank starting defense. Well, Second today base starting base out in uh, in left field, you got Peralta in center field, AJ Pollock, and rounding it around to right field, you Monty Tomas getting the start today. Goldie at first, Goslin playing second base, Owings and Lamb rounding around the left side. Chase Anderson on the mound and catching today, Salt Lamacchia. As Gonzo mentioned, Joe Panic is back in the starting lineup for the Giants. We saw him briefly at the end of the ball game yesterday. 3-11 and seven homers in All-Star this year. Well, he's another guy Bruce Bochy desperately needed back into the lineup just to give a lift to their team. He missed 34 games with back inflammation. Had not played since August 1st. Came into the ball game late yesterday and doubled his only at bat. Scored the Giants only run in fact. That's the inside strike call from Angel Hernandez and it's one and two. Pitch there by Chase Anderson. Panic just a little bit off. Yesterday he got a good at bat up there. He was down 0-2. Battled back to hit a nice ball out to center field over AJ Pollock's head, just out of the reach of outstretched AJ Pollock. Doubled off Daniel Hudson to open up the eighth inning. Came around in a Buster Posey single for the Giants' only run. One two pitches in the dirt, two balls and two strikes. Chase over his last three starts against the Reds, the A's, and the Rockies. 1 0 with a 2 5 5 ERA. The command has looked a lot better the last couple times out. Although he did give up eight hits in five innings against the Rockies last Wednesday, but that was likely more to do with Coors Field than anything else. This is there and it's full three and two. A pretty good pitcher tried to come on the inner half. Usually most of those right handed guys, the ball just comes back over the plate, just stuck on the inside half there. Angel's not giving him any any part of that inside part a little bit off the plate. Well, we're three and two before that pitch. I think the first base coach is checking. Yeah, that was ball four. Yep, and now we're going to figure this out. It was three and two up on the board and our graphic here prior to the pitch. And now nobody knows what the count was or is. Bruce wants to go. Uh, what are we doing here? Now you can go back. This is subject to review and look at the entire at bat and literally count the pitches. And then you may have to do that. Here comes crew chief Ted Barrett with his second base umpire. And he's going to call in third base umpire Adam Hamari as well as Chris Conroy from first. And it's going to take a uh, Four umpires to figure out what the count was. We have determined in our truck that that was indeed ball four. We have looked at the entire at bat while we're showing you these pictures, and that was ball four. 
And they're going to put the headsets on and uh, see for themselves. Well, I tell you, Chase Anderson didn't want to waste any time. He wanted to get him back in the box and try to get another pitch in there. Ball and strike counts, record keeping, are reviewable, and that's what they'll do here. Panic didn't seem to flinch either. He made no motion toward first base. So Joe Panic didn't seem to know what the count was there either. Nobody moved. It's another replay review. This one an umpire review brought to you by Mix One. Chase Anderson will continue to throw on the mound for the Diamondbacks while they look at this in New York. I think this is the last thing all the fans and all of us were thinking we were going to have. A, a it was you here early in the ball game. Yeah, it was three and two. He threw the pitch inside and missed. It was called a ball. Nobody seemed to really care, frankly. It was a little odd. Let's take a look. Let's count along here. Go pitch by pitch. Ball one. Strike one. Ball two. Nope. Strike two. One and two. One and two. Two and two. Three and two. Ball four. And finally, somebody goes, wait a minute. So now you figure this out, and Joe Panic has a one out walk. It's like detective work up here. Well, so here we go with Matt Duffy. Panic at first, one out. And that is strike one. All right, you know, when you come to the ballpark, you always see something new, don't you? And <laughs> second hitter of the game. Yeah. There's Angel Pagan helping out. Thank you, Angel. On one. <laughs> well, he had a little run in with Angel yesterday on a fair foul call down the line, first yeah, baseline. You're right. One and one now on Duffy. There it is. Well, we can just take a shot of Angel Pagan after every pitch, and uh, that'll avoid confusion. Yeah, you know he's going to try to give him a little ribbing his next time up at the plate, I'm sure. Matt Duffy is second on the Giants in hits and third on the team in RBIs. He's in there at 302 and 10 home runs. Yeah, all right, two and one. <laughs> we ought to just put him in a little box in the corner, see if we can get him. <laughs> I'll tell you, they're going to pitch Duffy a little bit different. They did panic. Panic. They tried to tie him up inside. First couple of pitches, they went away from Duffy. Let's see what they come with here. Panic takes off for a second. Duffy bounces it to third. So they'll stay out of the double play as Jake Lamb throws him out. Two down. And panic at second. Catcher number 28, Buster Posey. Here's Buster Posey. Checking in with Ted Barrett, the crew chief. Posey second in the National League and hitting at 330, behind only Bryce Harper. Leads the Giants in batting average, RBIs, and OPS. Careful with this guy because if there's a guy on the team that you want to pitch around, if you got an opportunity, it's definitely Buster Posey. He'll yeah. shoot that ball to right center field if he has to. He was three for four with a double yesterday. Drove in their only run. And Jared Salfalamaki are going to make sure that they're careful here. Posey has a nine game hitting streak going. And during that nine game hit streak, he's hitting 543. Looks, sounds like he's seeing the ball pretty well right now. I would say so. 
Second in the National League, six back of Bryce Harper. His Nationals blew a big lead against the Mets at home tonight. And they're still going all tied 7 7 at Nats Park. That's a game that Matt Harvey started. Had trouble, but the Mets have come back to tie. 1 0 on Posey. Two balls and no strikes. RBI chance for the Giants catcher here. Posey is 12 for his last 23. Here at Chase Field with eight RBIs. He enjoys hitting in this ballpark. Gotta be careful here, 2 0. Oh. You leave something too good over the plate, he's gonna hit it. Spots the fastball there and gets the strike, 2 and 1. Well, the good thing about a hitter like Buster Posey, he takes what you give him. If you're going to throw him out there, he'll shoot that ball to right. He doesn't try to hook the ball. That's why he's one of the better hitters in the National League. That's in there, two and two. Posey, one of those rare players who walks as much as he strikes out. He has had one more strikeout than walk this year. And his strikeout rate has dropped below 9% by far a career best. He kept trying to come out there. Now you're looking at a 20 pitch first inning for Chase Anderson. That's one thing they've got to get a little bit better at, especially a lot of these young pitchers. It really prevents you from settling in a flow and a rhythm early in the ball game. Did he go? Yes, he did. Chris Conroy rings up Posey. He says, I got a piece of it. Sounded like it. Comes Bruce Boshi again. Doesn't look like he did. Huh? All right, an eventful top of the first just underway here at Chase. Stay tuned. Against your Arizona Ford starter for the Giants, it's 40 year old right hander Tim Hudson. His 17th major league season missed all of August with a right shoulder strain. Tonight, his first start since July 26th. Here is AJ. 
just get some pretty pinpoint control. Uh, likes to keep the ball down. He's got a good sink on his fastball. Uh, throws a cutter off it. Um, occasional curveball. Uh, yeah, we, we've seen him quite a bit. So uh, I think kind of know what he's going to bring to the table. He's, he's a competitor, and he's going uh, to he's going to make pitches the whole game. Hudson has made two relief appearances this month after missing all of August with that right shoulder trouble. Now back in the rotation. Taking the place of Ryan Vogelsong, who was scheduled to make the start tonight until he came on in relief yesterday. So it's Hudson Gonzo for the Giants here tonight. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that uh, the big three in Oakland back in the day, Hudson, Zito, Zito and uh, Mulder, those three guys were very uh, influential in getting that team to the playoffs. And then, of course, he went on to Atlanta Braves and pitched well there. Broke in with Oakland in 1999. And the following season went 20 and 6 for the A's. Finished second in the Cy Young voting to Pedro Martinez. That was 15 years ago. 1 and 2 on AJ. Crawford and short. Running. One away. Line up for Chip Hales, Arizona Diamondbacks, brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Oh, leading off for the Diamondbacks, you just saw ground out there. AJ Pollock, Phil Gosselin hitting second once again. Paul Goldschmidt, the All Star, hitting third. David Peralta, cleanup. Jared Saltalamacchia hitting fifth. Jake Lamb, sixth. Tomas Owings, rounded out by Chase Anderson, hitting ninth. And here is one of the hitting heroes from yesterday, Phil Gosselin. 317 and a pair of homers. Both home runs coming. With the D-backs. And he's got eight RB guys in eight games as a Diamondback so far. I'll tell you, it's a good challenge for a guy like Gosling when you face a guy like Hudson. Well. You talk about a guy with a sinker, cutter, four seam fastball, curve, change, and a split. <laughs> Gosling, two for four yesterday, including his three run homer, scored twice. Not a bad chase field debut for Phil. To Ron Pennington down there, our Golden Glover. And a terrific start with his new team for Phil. There's Ron. Scott Chan working right field tonight. There's Scott. Well, you always want to get that first one out of the way down the line there. He made a good play on it. <laughs> Watch Goslin hit here the last week or so. And it, you know, it's easy to forget this is a guy who is still trying to prove that he can help a major league team win. He's still played fewer than 80 games at the big league level. So far, so good. Offer one more time. The backhander plants and throws. Two down. Take a look at the Giants around Tim Hudson, our mid-first bank starting defense for San Francisco. Well, you got Blanco out in left field, center field, Angel Pagan, Marlon Bird out in right, Duffy at third, Crawford at short, Panic at second base, Brandon Bell playing first, behind the plate the all-star Posey, and on the mound Tim Hudson. And at the plate, Paul Goldschmidt, fourth in the league and hitting at 319, 27 home runs. Goldie's second in the league at RBIs. He's third in OPS. 0 for 3 yesterday with a walk and a pair of strikeouts. How big an advantage is it, Gonzo, for the Diamondbacks facing a guy like Hudson who's been around forever? No secrets here, no mysteries. They've certainly seen plenty of them over the years. Yeah, I think it's refreshing for those guys because of the simple fact there's a lot of video on them. Crawford one more time. The Jeter jump throw, and he makes the play. Three assists in the inning for the Giants shortstop, Brandon Crawford. This may have been the best one here. A little hesitation, double clutch, still time to get Goldie. No score after one.
for the lowest price when you become a D-back season ticket holder. You can choose from full, half, series, or weekend plans. Season ticket holders enjoy unique benefits, access to exclusive events, flexible payment plans, and a whole lot more. So check the 2016 schedule. It came out online today. And get more information. dbacks.com slash tickets. We are going next year, Gonzo, to Toronto, Boston, Baltimore, and AL East is back in town. Well, that'll be exciting. A couple big offensive teams, especially the Toronto Blue Jays, the way they've been knocking the ball out of the park. Oh, just bludgeoning people. Marlon Bird ahead, two balls and no strikes. Bird at 244 and 22 homers. Bounces one in the hole. Lamb in front of Owens. This is the 2016 schedule, which was released today by Major League Baseball. We open here at Chase Field, fans, against the Rockies April 4th. Finish up against the Padres in between. Get some interesting uh, visits. The Yankees, the Rays will be here. Two against Toronto, two different series. The Red Sox will be at Fenway Park again. And uh, and Baltimore Harbor at the end of September to take on Buck Showalter. That'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to the Astros coming through here, too. We're, uh, we're finishing up here against the Astros this year. Play Houston. October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, the final three games of the season. Brandon Belt, 278 and 17 homers. 0 for 4 with a strikeout yesterday. And this will be nice for Chase to get a quick inning if he could right here after throwing 20 plus pitches in the first. Almost threw one extra one. Yeah. Diamondbacks have the shift on. That's a fair ball down the first baseline. Anderson covers, and there you go, two down. Okay, I've been doing a lot of thinking last night, and today we're going to go with some big keys to the game. We're the Valley Honda keys to the game today. What'd you come up with? We're going to keep pretending that we are oh, still over in San Francisco. It worked yesterday. We're going to do it again today, and we're going to play the spoiler. You know, the Giants are eight and a half games behind the Giants, but uh, they play 20 of their remaining 24 games versus teams below 500. You have the most heavily researched Honda keys to the game that we've uh, come across. Got a lot of guys working for me here. <laughs> Your staff. I love it. Very impressive. Brandon Crawford. There's a science behind your picks. I mean, BB has he's a very artsy guy, BB. You know, he's always thinking. Big picture stuff, trying to weave a narrative, which is great. Yours are a little more analytical. Well, BB's in between chords when he's playing the guitar. He just kind of thinks the stuff up, and that's yeah, that left side brain stuff. <laughs> oh, and two on Crawford. Crawford leading the Giants in home runs, but he has not homered since August sixth. Second on the team in RBIs. I thought Sunday at Wrigley when he sang take me out to the ball game he might bring his guitar and just you know kind of give us an Eddie Vedder jam session or something but he he nailed it. I'll tell you what he did a great job. I was watching the game watching sure you did. guys. Yeah. In that oven known as the uh, Wrigley Field broadcast booth. <laughs> two and two. You guys were buddied up in there pretty oh. tight. We were cooking I tell you. But what a great place to play Wrigley Field all the excitement the fans have done a wonderful job and they continue to do so trying to change that ballpark three strikeouts for Chase Anderson. Thank you Harry Chase is retired five in a row. If you were a hot dog would you eat yourself. I would.
Well, we talk about Tim Hudson being a veteran pitcher that's been around. We go, go back into the files and see Tim Hudson back in 2001 on the far left screen had the finger sticking out of the glove, tipping his pitches early in his career. Then you see him in the middle screen, 2014, went with the finger, the, the cover over the finger, and then here in 2015 tonight, went back without the uh, finger cap. Well, he's had that sinker working tonight. Three ground ball outs, all to Brandon Crawford in the bottom of the first, and now David Peralta leads off the D-back second. Now, how was he tipping pitches just by having the finger outside the glove? Well, I'm glad you asked. You, uh, <laughs> early in, uh, in in players' career, sometimes you try to look for things where you could pick up the curveball, fastball, different things. So you look at his finger. Whenever he would throw a fastball, he would grip it tighter on the glove. And a lot of times, when pitchers going to throw the curveball, they would either hook their finger a little bit just to try to dig in there a little bit more in their glove. Mm -hmm. So you just look for some some type of uh, something different with the way they hold their finger on their glove. One and one on Peralta. Let's take a look at Hudson and 0-1 against the Diamondbacks. There's the finger outside. Great fastball. Well, but apparently uh, that was going on the whole time because you told me he just yeah, the middle we, glove was last year. Yeah, but uh, we had his pitches one year, and uh, he still threw a gem against us. So uh, <laughs> obviously it doesn't work all the time. And another ground ball out for Tim Hudson. That's four up, four down. A retired Peralta. Now here's Jared Saltalamacchio. This guy's been uh, really good for a long time. Has battled injuries, however, down the stretch. And what is likely his final year? He's actually made only four appearances since the end of June, and only two of them starts tonight. His first start in about six weeks. Jared Saltalamacchio. Now somebody in the dugout or maybe at the plate brings that back to the dugout. Somebody just spots it right and oh, figures the, it out. Well the, all the guys sitting on the bench you see them you know all you know you may think they're just looking around the field but a lot of times especially hitters they're trying to pick up different things that the pitcher does. And one of those things is just looking for some type of variation whether he sets his glove low when he comes set up higher for breaking balls just anything different that they can pick up. For a fastball, curveball, change up, flaring the glove, tighten the glove up for a fastball. Shift is on again, Salta Lamacchia. 203 with five home runs. Well, you mentioned flaring the glove. That was Andy Pettit's big one. Yep. And, and that's why guys like Ryan Dempster and Matt Garza used to shake the glove every pitch so it would have a uniform look every time. Yeah, and a lot of that now is with videos. A lot of guys watch videos. And that sinker. Just eating them up. Five ground ball outs. Third base. Jake Lamb now. And the bat has really looked good lately for Jake, who's at 284 with six home runs. And Jake has a six game hitting streak. He's hit safely in every game this month. Well, we had three six three put outs in the first so far two four three put outs here in the second so if the pattern holds this one will go to Joe panic on the ground. I'd like to see it go over his head out into that swimming pool would be nice. I sure would. Well this is the guy who could do it nine hits in his last 17 at bats Jake Lang. And including his home run at Wrigley Friday. Two and oh. Sometimes those guys that throw those sinker balls are pretty good pitches to hit for those left handed hitters because they like that ball down in the strike zone. Just drop that bat head on it, get it elevated. I should mention that Dejon Watson from the Diamondback front office will join us in the third inning. And with the roster call ups today, there's Dejon. We're going to talk. Peter O'Brien find out what's going on with Peter O'Brien what has been going on all year at Reno we'll talk about Socrates Brito Archie Bradley started for Reno yesterday 
have some pictures of that and talk to John about what's going on in the minor league system and what to expect here from O'Brien and Brito and some of the other guys as uh, we finish up September. Here's Peter O'Brien, the catcher turned outfielder. I'll tell you, and if he would have stayed at catcher, he might have been up in the big leagues a little sooner. And sure enough, Joe Panic. Three six threes in the first, three four threes in the second. Hudson's got that ground ball going. Any of the Diamondback series against the Dodgers coming up this weekend, Saturday, the first 10,000 fans, 21 and older, can pick up this D backs beer stein. It's courtesy of Budweiser. Visit dbacks.com for more information. Dodgers come in here. Cheers! Three games starting Friday. And the Giants are slipping away quickly here, trying to catch LA. Gregor Blanco leads off the third against Chase Anderson, who's retired five straight. He blasts this one deep to right center field. And that's off the wall. Blanco is going to head for third, and it's a triple. Just missed a home run. Ted Barrett, the second base umpire, and crew chief ranging way out there. He signaled safe, and now he is changing the call. It's a home run. First hit of the ball game is the fifth home run of the year for Gregor Blanco. Let's take a look. There's no doubt about this one. It hits the upper rail over the left or the center field line. Blanco's had a really nice year for the Giants, and he has a home run to lead off the third. So one nothing San Francisco, and here's Hudson. Well, he ambushed him right there. He went first pitch heater. He went right after him. He jumped all over it. Hudson jumps on that one. Deep to left field and gone. Back to back homers. Two nothing Giants. His fourth career home run, his first this year. Right there, I think he just left it up in the strike zone. A hitter like Tim Hudson's looking for something up.
Angel Pagan. Strike one. Pagan struck out looking his first time. Blanco and Hudson, eight and nine in the giant order, go back to back to open up the third. And this is about getting into the box in a timely fashion. And once again, it's Angel Pagan and Angel Hernandez going back and forth. This started Gonzo, as you pointed out yesterday. Yeah, and I, this isn't going to end ugly. This is going to end ugly before the end of the game. You know it's going to happen. Center field, and it drops in off the fist for Pagan. And a bloop single. Glaring back at Angel Hernandez. And Angel returning the favor. Here comes Mike Harkey. Just a little bleeder in the shallow center for Pagan. Bill Hayes, the first base coach, gets to hear all about it. Now let's take a look now at Tim Hudson and see what happened here. He set up down and away, and it kind of went up. Belt high outer half for Hudson. And he took it out of here. Yeah, that's just too good a pitch, especially against a veteran pitcher that's been around. He's seen a lot of quality pitchers. He's had to face them. Can't leave a pitch like that up against Tim Hudson. So the homer by Blanco, the homer by Hudson, the bloop single by Pagan. And here's Panic, who walked his first time up. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Angel Hernandez Pagan situation isn't going to be over. Well, Angel seems to have those situations with a lot of players. Pagan's going to have to get in line there. Umpires were originally at the start of this year told not to enforce the pace of play rules with the hitter. Blasted down the right field line, it's headed for the corner, and Pagan's on the run. They're going to wave him home. Here's the relay. There is no throw, and it's 3 0 Giants. RBI double for Joe Panic. Four base hits open up the San Francisco third. I think Chase is just leaving too many balls up in the strike zone right now. Nothing sinking for him. You guys are getting too many good swings on him. Ball's belt high. Three nothing. Here's Matt Duffy. location there salty wanted it away and that ball ran right back over the heart of the plate. This is a situation where you just have to find something that you can throw for strikes the change up the curveball whatever he can come up with here. Eh? Just try to find something you, you need to get an out right now is what he needs. One and one Sanderson Ford bullpen will get busy the right hander Silvino Bracho. And the left hander Matt Reynolds. Duffy grounded out his first time up. Huh? Blasted into center a base hit. That's five straight hits to open up the inning. Here's the throw from Pollock. And Panic is in there. Four nothing Giants. Another pitch by Chase Anderson just up in the strike zone. He's just unable to get that ball down. Catcher, Buster, pitch right there. Belt high once again. Good hitters like that. Ball's up in the strike zone. They're going to make good contact. Saw that against Mike Leak here yesterday. He hung a couple of pitches and they were hit for long homers. 
There it's on to Lamaki going into a four corners offense yeah, here. And I think Chase wants to go out there and talk to stall out a little bit, get the, get the guys hot in the bullpen. Blanco homered, Hudson homered. Pagan single, Panic double, Duffy single, and that looks like it will be it for Chase Anderson. A short 90 goes two plus and does not retire a batter here in the third. It's 4 0 Giants. Silvino Bracho coming in back after this. We'll go back to one of the last times the Giants were here at Chase Field. It was July 18th, and Chase Anderson was hit hard by San Francisco. Seven runs, ten hits. He lasted only three and two-thirds innings in that start. And here we are on September 8th, and this one was even shorter. Five straight hits, including two homers, open up the Giant third, and here's Silvino Bracho. Yeah, and I think uh, Chip just didn't want to let it get away any more than what it has already. Four runs in the inning without an out. He just didn't have good command of his stuff, leaving too many pitches up in the strike zone. So he wanted to stop the bleeding, get somebody else out there. Four runs in, Matt Duffy at first. Nobody out here is Buster Posey, who struck out his first time up. Posey hitting just under 360 since the All-Star break. Well, I think for Baracho here, the big thing, especially for your defense out there, try to get a ground ball out or something. These guys have been standing out there for a while. You get stale. Silvino Bracho, 23 year old right hander. And a very impressive year in a relief role at Double A Mobile pitching for Robbie Hammock down there. Big strikeout numbers. And he's ahead of Posey, one and two. Silvino Bracho, 37 appearances at Mobile. A 181 ERA and 16 saves. There's another young pitcher in the Diamondbacks organization auditioning here for next year. 59 strikeouts in 44 innings. And that's out of play. By the way, if you're keeping an eye on the pennant races, and this is the time of year to do that, a wild one in Washington, D.C. tonight. The Nationals. Had a big lead against Matt Harvey in the Mets, but the Mets came storming back. And they have won that game. That's now a final. The Mets come back and beat the Nationals 8-7 with a game-ending double play. The Nationals had bases loaded, bottom nine down one, and the Mets hang on and win it. There's the final up on the board. A huge game in the NL East. One and two on Posey. In the air to Peralta in left. 
the first out in the third. Brings up Marlon Bird. Bird grounded out to lead off the second inning. He's been a nice addition to the Giants. He's got 18 RBIs in 17 games since he was picked up from the Reds last month. Had a pair of hits yesterday. He's one of those guys that's been brought in just to fill in the gaps a little bit, especially with Hunter Pence out, Aoki's out. They were looking for that veteran presence in the middle of their lineup, and they've gotten him ever since he's been there. He's been hitting with some power. You see the ink. There's Hunter Pence. And a tattoo on the right arm of Marlon Bird. That is a Theodore Roosevelt's famous work, the man in the arena. He's got the entire thing on his arm. Inspirational. It's working. This guy has become a little bit of a mercenary here, going to pennant contenders late in seasons last few years. Five teams in less than three full seasons. He's been since 2013 with the Mets, the Pirates, the Phillies. The Reds and now the Giants. He is that quintessential power bat that playoff contenders go for late in the year. He's the Kenny Lofton of this era, right? Yeah. yeah Kenny Lofton used to do that. A little bit different type player. Marlon's more of a power guy. Kenny more of a speed, good center fielder. A ball and a strike. Nice, as we saw, without Hunter Pence once again. He's missed their last 20 games with a strained left oblique. And that's his third separate trip to the DL this year. He had a fractured forearm in spring training. Remember, he was hit by a pitch very early in spring training. Then left wrist tendonitis, and now the oblique. And they're 34 and 18 when Hunter Pence plays this year, 37 and 49 when he doesn't. He is a Big difference maker, and they have not had him for most of the year. Made that man's job a little harder. Well, when you're a manager, you got players like that that you don't even have to worry about every single day. You know, you can pencil them in. They're going to go out there and do whatever they can to help the ball club. But when they're not able to get out there on the field, it makes it a little bit tougher for those managers to try to find the right strategy and the right players to fill in. Even in September with expanded rosters. One and two on Bird. Up and in. He did not go, says Chris Conroy. Two balls and two strikes. Well, Bochi was saying about Marlon Bird, the thing he likes about him is he has no fear. He's been playing the game a long time, and Bochi said the Giants were excited that he was available because they had lost almost all their outfielders. They're without Nori Aoki, who's had concussion issues. Pagan's been limping around all year. And Pence has been out most of the season. Well, those are the types of players that you look for, especially uh, in a pennant chase. You, you know, you're trying to make a run at another uh, you're defending World Series champs. You're trying to get back there once again. You've got some key injuries in your lineup, so you're looking for those veteran type guys that have been in big situations, know how to handle the pressure, and can go out there and play every day. And Silvino Bracho strikes him out. So Bracho comes in, gets a fly ball and a strikeout, two down. And now he'll work to Brandon Belt. A great pitch by Bracho right here. Fastball just runs right by Marlon Bird. Belt grounded out his first time up. Diamondbacks will put the shift on. With Matt Duffy in first and two down. Brandon Belt hitting only 160 against the Diamondbacks this year. 
And in 13 games versus Arizona, he's had one RBI. And this is a guy that crushed the D-backs last year, homered four times in 10 games against Arizona. Whole different story this season. Yeah, he got out of the gates quick last year and then got hurt. Before that, he was having a fantastic year. And the irony there is he's having one of the best years of his career at the age of 27 offensively just not against the Diamondbacks which uh, is just fine with everybody here. <laughs> Duffy will run occasionally he's got eight stolen bases has not been caught this year. He bluffs and holds at first that one misses inside and it's one and one. Also trying to come in there with a the heater. Be careful with a guy like Belt. These guys like to get their arms extended, get that power swing going. He has done a good job of handling pitchers who try and come inside on him this year, Brandon Belt. A little turn on that. He's also started hitting away from these defensive shifts more often. He'll go to left center more than he did before. But uh, the shifts. Still work against Bell. Generally, when he hits the ball on the ground, it's to the right side. Like that. And he lines it right by Goldie and Gosselin. Duffy will take the turn. It's in the corner. They're going to wave him home. Gosselin has the relay. The throw is not in time. And it's 5 0 Giants. RBI double for Brandon Belt. First five Giants batters in this inning at base hits, all five have scored. Now you've got the left hand hitting Brandon Crawford coming up. Chip Hale will go to his bullpen and match up with Matt Reynolds back after this. D backs down, finds it. Brought to you in part by Papa Murphy's Love at 425 degrees. And by Phoenix International Raceway. Join PIR November 15th for NASCAR. Visit us at PhoenixRaceway.com and get your tickets now. Downtown Phoenix back inside Chase Field. Last time we saw Matt Reynolds was Sunday at Wrigley Field. He gave up a grand slam to the left hand hitting Miguel Montero. Now he's in there against another tough lefty. It's Brandon Crawford. With five runs in in the San Francisco third, the numbers for Matt this year. It's been, it's been a long inning out there already for the defense. They've started this inning at about 715. They're 735 or 36 now. Crawford is the ninth man to bat in this inning for the Giants. 
It all started with a Blanco homer to lead off the inning against Chase Anderson. Blanco on deck. Crawford 0 for 5 in the series so far. He struck out his first time. Up. Crawford had a 13 game hitting streak end on August 20th. And since that streak was snapped, he has gone ice cold. Just four for his last 43 since that hit streak ended last month. In there for a strike, two and two. And this could be one of those games. Hopefully, your offense could come back and pick you up and get some runs, but this could be one of those games for the bullpen by committee here. Guys are going to be coming out and getting a little work in today. Well, you've seen Chip Hale in this third inning trying to match up here and stop the bleeding. Still plenty of time to make it up. We saw that tonight with the Mets and the uh, Washington Nationals game. And Harvey had, a, I believe it was a 7 1 lead in that ball game. Something like that. And now with the September call ups, it's not like you're short of relievers for either side. This is where it gets a little crowded. Matt Reynolds comes in and does a good job. He strikes out Crawford. And that finally ends the giant third. But they have a 5 0 lead. Here's what's next brought to you by CenturyLink. We'll be joined in our booth by the Diamondbacks Senior Vice President of Baseball Operations. We'll talk prospects with Dejon Watson next. With September roster expansion, a little more crowded up here. We thought we'd talk about that with a senior VP of baseball operations, John Watson. You guys were busy today. We got half the minor leagues up here. We had a few bodies moving today. It was, it was exciting for the kids and, and for us as well to get a chance to evaluate these guys at the major league level. So it's it's a, a fun time. How critical is what you see here? And there's one of the guys, Socrates Brito, has got a bat in his hands in the dugout. Let's start with Socrates Brito. Uh, how critical is what you see here over the next three weeks? I think it's really important for us as we continue to evaluate the organization and where we are and as we get ready to plan for the winter, having a chance to see Socrates come up here after having a very strong year at Double A where he hit 300, led the league in triples, really athletic player. So to, to add that kind of speed and athleticism to this roster at this particular time, it's great for us to see. Yes, Monty Tomas will lead off the third against Tim Hudson. Yeah, Brito, 15 triples at Mobile. We've heard a lot about the athleticism, yeah. seen a little bit in spring training. But uh, let's take a look. Tell us about Socrates, Brito. You know, the really athletic kid, sharp. He's making um, tremendous adjustments this year. Uh, we wanted him to shorten his strength, excuse me, shorten his swing a little bit. And he did that, and, and the, the results were there for him. He was consistent with his approach, and he plays with such passion and, and speed. 
A career 288 hitter in the minor leagues. He's only 23, and he uh, may be just a moment away here from his first major league at bat. So this is good timing having you in here. It'll be exciting to see it. You know, I know he's ready, having uh, watched him play this past winter down the Dominican Republic. The, the, the time and energy he put in this offseason, going over to, to, the, to the complex and working out in the DR, was really, I think it's paid off for him. Well, Osmani Tomas strikes out looking against Tim Hudson for a strikeout for Hudson, and Brito will. Move into the on deck circle, presumably to hit in the nine spot for the pitcher Matt Reynolds as Chris Owens steps in. What have you been up to lately? I know you travel, literally travel the globe looking at baseball players. Well, I just came back from Japan. I, I followed Gonzo and, and uh, Randy and, and D. Hall over there. Did a, a Tough 15, act to follow. Oh, my goodness, understatement. 15 <laughs> days in Japan, Osaka, Hiroshima. Uh, we, we, we really we ran the circuit uh, trying to. Run down some of the better amateurs as well as some of the major league players in the MPB and and, and really start again building for the winter. Um, the team uh, USA was over there. They were playing in the 18U tournament. Owens drives it to right. Bird is there. And a shot of President and CEO Derek Hall. Well, here we go. The major league debut of 23 year old Socrates Brito as uh, Chip Hale uses the Socratic method here and goes to the bench in the bottom of the third. I'm excited for the young man who's worked his tail off for this opportunity right here. 6 1, 200 left hand hitter. Just turned 23 years old two days ago. Brito and even 309 homers and 57 RBIs at Double A Mobile this year. Stole 20 bases, hit 15 triples. 129 games for Robbie Hammock at Double A Mobile. There's a high chopper against Hudson. It bounces to first, and Brito beats it out. He's aboard a base hit. Socrates Brito driving the bus. I'll tell you what, that ball hung up in the air. It looked like he got a second gear on him right there. He just picked up the pace. My goodness. Again, you talk about that athleticism and, and the, you know, the speed and the pace in which he plays. It's game changing, and it'll apply pressure on both sides of the baseball. Our chance, Roberts air conditioning, cool play of the game. The speed of Socrates Brito gets him his first big league hit. And it comes against Tim Hudson, not a bad guy to have on the resume. AJ Pollock, first hit for the Diamondbacks, comes from Brito. Now tell us, Dijon, about Peter O'Brien because there's a there's a lot that's going on with this young man. Yeah. We've heard, we watched him through the fall league, uh -huh. all winter long, all spring, uh -huh. trying to catch, and then we yeah. heard. One day that he went to Phil Nevin and said, I don't want to catch, and now he's an outfielder. Tell us about the evolution this year, Peter. You, you know, I think he, he really struggled with the just really commanding the game behind the plate, and he was getting frustrated with the process. Uh, I, I think it was really good for him to get to the outfield so he can really focus in on his strengths. And as bad as his one of it's his main carrying tool, uh, he's made uh, some positive strides defensively out in right field. I think he'll have a chance to play both corners. Uh, but but the bat is what's going to you know get him here and help him stay here. You know he's an offensive player. Uh, again hit 280. I don't want to say 284, 26 yep. home runs, drove in 100. I think he led the league in RBIs, if I'm not mistaken. 107 but, uh, RBIs in just over 130 games. Yeah. Can you stay for another half? For you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. We got a lot to talk about. A lot of good young players to talk here in a five nothing ball game. Back with Dejon Watson after this.
back at Chase Field with Diamondbacks Senior Vice President of Baseball Operations, Dejon Watson. Uh, tell us about the names here, why these guys and why now? You know, I think Shashin is a guy who's had some major league experience and the opportunity to come back to the big leagues. We know he can pitch. Uh, this guy had a three and a half ERA in Colorado and having the opportunity to kind of get back to the big leagues and reestablish himself for us is a great opportunity again to assess as we go into next year to see if he can help us and, and, and provide some length or some depth for us organizationally. Well, he's looked great so far in two starts. He really has. And, and you know, we were fortunate enough to pick him up in midseason. He was with the Indians and had an out in his deal. And we sent our, our scouts in to see him and they came back with a glowing report. And uh, Pat Murtaugh did a tremendous job on getting that guy into our organization. New pitcher for the Diamondbacks is Josh Colmenter. Gregor Blanco, who homered to lead off that five run giant third, leads off the fourth. Had a shot of Jamie Romack up there. There's a guy that put up some impressive numbers at Triple A Arena. I want to say he led the team in homers and uh, again had a really productive year. Uh, and I have some history with Jamie. I had him uh, last year over at that uh, other team on the West Coast. And uh, again, just a blue collar guy who plays a game right and, and he brings some energy to the ballpark. And, and he'll surprise you. You know, he's really good against left handed pitching. And, and again, given the opportunity, um, you never know what this guy can do. But he's, he's that guy that's right on the, on the verge of getting an opportunity to stick in the major leagues. 27 homers, 100 RBIs for the Aces. He hit 42 doubles. Yeah, and I mean, this guy's hit 20 plus home runs over the last six years at AAA. And again, he's a Canadian kid with, with great makeup and character, tremendous teammate. And you love to see these type of players get these opportunities. The slowly hit grounder to Goslin in second base. I want to get back to Peter O'Brien. Sure. If we can, to John, uh -huh. we kind of run out of time there at the last half inning. What about the idea that he didn't want to catch anymore? How big a hurdle is that for him and for the organization? Well, again, he's talking about getting back there this winter. He wants to go to winter ball and, and try and catch again. And, and again, it was for him, it was really staying focused, remembering the game plan, sticking to game plan, just some of the smaller things with, with handling a staff. Uh, I think if he were behind the plate, he probably would have gotten here a lot sooner. Uh, but again, the bat is, is a carrying tool, and in any way you can get that kind of offensive production on the field, on a consistent, excuse me, a consistent basis, you want to try and find it. I watched him work really hard in the fall league. He worked with Glenn Sherlock all winter long. Yeah. He caught all spring long. Was he close to being major league ready defensively as a catcher? He felt like he'd made a, a ton of positive strides and was getting better almost every day. Um, you know, in spring training, he had a little hiccup there, and then he got back on it and, and, and fixed the problems that he was having with his throwing mechanics. Uh, for, for me, again, I felt like he was making positive strides and had a chance to come here and help us. But that's not a closed book. You mentioned that a moment ago. I don't ago. think it's a Catch closed it. book at all. I mean, he's talked with his agent. I've talked with his agent. I've talked with the kid. He's been open, you know, to, to discussing getting back behind the plate. He's talked about going to winter ball and, and possibly, you know, catching this winter. So. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we will discuss it before this the season is over and uh, hopefully lay out a, a, a great plan for him going into the offseason. Well, here's Angel Pagan, who has uh, had an ongoing dialogue of sorts with Angel Hernandez behind the plate, Gonzalo. You've been keeping an eye on this. These two are not seeing eye to eye here tonight. Yeah, they haven't since the start of the series, so it's something to watch. We'll keep an eye on this. I saw Dijon uh, yesterday that Archie Bradley pitched pretty well for Reno. He had a good outing. It was good to see. And again, getting getting caught up on the innings. He's missed so much time this year with injury. And for us, getting him back on the mound, competing has been been really good for us to see and see how he's been able to take a game plan in and carry it out. And uh, you know, and gave him I think seven innings yesterday it was really good. Is Archie on a case by case basis? Is there a chance we see him pitch for the Diamondbacks at this level this year? Um, again, we, we have 24 games left, 23 mm -hmm. games left. You know, that's something Stu, Tony, and myself will discuss, I would say, over the next day or two. Um, I know we've talked about his offseason plan and getting him prepared to, to go to Instructional League. And if, if, he, if he doesn't come back here, we just want to continue to build the innings for him. That's so important for, for him and his, and his career. That's all they'll get. Let's take a look at Archie from. Uh, from yesterday, how is he doing health-wise? How's the shoulder? Physically, he's been good, man. The velocity's coming back. He's 93 to 95. Had a good breaking ball working yesterday. Um, just repeated delivery mechanics, which is so important for him. And again, it's about the competition, logging the innings, and getting the durability back. Has it? I don't want to say it's been a lost season because that's not accurate, but it's been a real setback for him this year, hasn't it? I won't say it was a big setback, but it's been a learning experience for him, for mm -hmm. us, uh, about where he is and his overall development. And, you know, again, getting on the mound on a consistent basis and competing against this competition up here, it's different than anywhere you, you know you compete. Now, Cole Mentor hits panic, looked like in the back of the shoulder.
We've heard a lot about Aaron Blair, a lot about Braden Shipley, uh, the two first rounders from a couple of years ago. How are those guys doing right now? Where do you see them fitting in uh, in the springtime and into next year? I think Blair's uh, 13 wins this year, had a tremendous year. Double A, triple A, command of fastball improved, secondary pitches improved. Uh, I think he's knocking on the door. Shipley started off slow, gained some ground during the middle of the year. He, he struggled a little bit with his fastball command, but that did get better in the second half, uh, and as well as his secondary pitches developed. Both of those guys are good-looking, you know, potential mid-rotation to three, four type starters for us. Uh, but Blair's definitely slightly ahead for me um, mm -hmm. over, over Shipley. That seems to be the consensus with the scouts and everybody else. Hey, talking about the minor league teams, we got... As always, it seems like a, a lot of postseason experience for some guys here. I mean, you've got uh, Missoula and Hillsboro. Yes. You've got uh, Visalia, Kane yes. County, all in the postseason. Yes, and actually tonight, uh, Hillsboro, they were up one nothing coming in here. Uh, it's either win or go home for them tonight. They need to win tonight and, and uh, to keep their their series going. That's game two of a best of three against the Giants affiliate in the Northwest League. Salem. That is correct. Salem yeah. Salem Kaiser and then Missoula starts tomorrow. Um, really like their their bats in that lineup. Isan Diaz is off to a, a great start as a young player. Second round pick a couple of years ago hit 350. I mean this boy has been on fire the second half. How's Dansby Swanson doing? Speaking of Hillsborough, Dansby's doing well. You know, he's hitting about 280-ish. I think he finished the year 284, 285, but mm -hmm. but really sound defensively on both sides of the baseball. Great teammate leadership. Um, it's it just oozing out of him. Uh, again, I think he, we're ready to push him, and can't wait to get him to instructional league to really start advancing his skill set and, and hopefully giving him some advanced techniques to take with him going into the offseason and into the next spring training. Two and one on Matt Duffy. Two one and two out. Gonzo, I know you're involved. Uh, you know, he just went to Kane County when we were in Chicago over the weekend. You've seen a lot of these guys, too. I did. Pretty exciting just to see the minor league clubs, four of them, into the playoffs. Yes. It uh, just goes to show you that the, the depth that the Diamondbacks have down here in the minor leagues with all these young players. Are you going to be heading out to any of these playoff games? My, my goal is to get out and see Kane County. Uh, I really like that ball club. It's a, it's a great team, both offensively and, and, and the pitchers on that staff, young starters with upside. Uh, Ryan Burr, our, you know, our pick from this year is in the bullpen, closing the touch, and they, you know, anywhere from 97 to 100. So it'll be exciting to see him. I love the bats that are there. Um, if I sell you another group, again, very offensive. They've, they, they've led from, you know, wire to wire, both halves. A good looking ball club. And, and again, Mike Bell and the staff, our minor league staff, these guys do a tremendous job of getting these kids prepared. They understand what the plan is coming out of spring training. We've been very consistent with, with the information that we've been trying to provide the players to help close the gaps or any holes they may have in their games. And so, again, my hat's off to our, our minor league staff and how hard they work to get these guys prepared to come and compete at the highest level of, of baseball. That was our State Farm Farm Report of the Ball game. A look at the Kane County Cougars. Just a juggernaut this year. Those guys have been rolling. Oh, my goodness. Second half, they were on fire. I caught them at the end of the first half and was shocked that they didn't, you know, you know close out the first half of the season. Well, Josh Polmenter closes out the at bat against Matt Duffy in strands two. Diamondback senior VP of baseball ops, Dejon Watson. Dejon, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Appreciate it.
Diamondbacks Sports Arizona is brought to you in part by Tire Pros. For the best selection of Continental and General Brand tires, visit your local Arizona Tire Pros location today. And by Hotel Transylvania 2 in theater September 25th. The Arizona Desert Sky, D-backs down 5 nothing as we start at the bottom of the fourth against the Giants' Tim Hudson. Defensive change behind him. A. Ray Adrianza takes over at shortstop for Brandon Crawford. Hudson so far, three scoreless. He's given up just one hit. That was by Socrates Brito, who had a base hit in his first major league at bat, coming off the bench, hitting for the pitcher in the last inning. And Phil Gosselin leads off the fourth, so it's Gosselin, Goldie, Peralta, 2 3 and 4 against Hudson. Yeah, it's got to be exciting for Brito to go out there and Pick up a base hit his first time out. And he used Gonzo. I, I thought it was a very appropriate first major league hit for Socrates Brito because we have heard so much about the athleticism in all the outfield spots in the minor leagues. The way he runs the bases, this is a guy who had 15 triples at Mobile this year. A lot of speed, and we saw that as he legged out an infield chopper. Well, regardless of what happens in this game today, he's going to sleep pretty good tonight. I bet. To Brandon Belt. Hustlin hustling all the way, but he's out to lead off the fourth. And like you said, it's uh, it's not like he got a hit off a September call up or anything like that. You're going to get it off a guy. You, you much rather get it off a guy that everybody's heard of. Yeah, you know what? I got my first base hit against Scruffy McScrufferson. <laughs> and that doesn't, that's not sexy. Tim Hudson, yeah, that'll work. Here's Goldie. Grounded out his first time up. Try and get you word from the giant dugout as to whether Brandon Crawford may be injured or just getting the rest of the night off. Crawford has uh, been up twice, 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Goldie down 0 and 2. Still hitless in the series. That's in only 42 pitches in this ball game. He has been very effective with that. Brown ball. Goldie blasts it back the other way. A one out single. D backs fans, when the D backs win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every D backs win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code D backs 50 at PapaJohns.com. Look out. Second hit for the Diamondbacks. Goldie at first, one out for David Peralta, who grounded out his first time. You know, the way this D backs offense has been rolling, that they can get a couple guys on here and blast one out of here. They're right back in the middle of this game. Absolutely, only the bottom of the fourth here. That's why Chip Hale was so anxious to get out of that third. Using, using both the Bracho and Reynolds to get those final three outs. And especially the way Peralta has hit against the Giants this year. Very productive. 14 games versus San Francisco. Only nine starts, but he's hit 390. Two doubles, three triples, and three homers. All against the Giants this year. Safe. Obstruction is always on the defender. Interference is on the runner. Not 
not sure which one that may have been. I think Goldie didn't want to give him a free out there. And he went down like he ran into a brick wall. That's a base hit. No error on the play. A base hit for Peralta. And so now David with a seven game hitting streak. Goldie just stood there like a brick wall. And panic went down like a rubber ball. I'm sure you're going to see that play again somewhere down the road. So here's uh, your threat now. Two on, one out for Salty, who grounded out his first time. Salty hitting 250 with three homers since the All Star break. D backs a chance now to get right back in this ball game with only one swing. One and one. Remember, Panic just missed a month with a bad back. He had lower back inflammation. That couldn't have helped being steamrolled by Goldie on the bases. That's a car wreck right there. Sure is. Base hit. Andy Green will stop Goldie and the bases are loaded. Three straight singles for the Diamondbacks. And here comes Jake Lamb. Backs are starting to look for that ball up a little bit in the strike zone. That sinker's not sinking. And they've got just about their hottest hitter up there. Jake grounded out his first time. We've got Goldie at third, Peralta at second, and Salty at first. Jake Lamb over his last 16 games hitting 365. See if Jake can hit one in the gaps here, get us right back in this ball game. Nine hits in his last 18 at bats as he steps in here. Strike one. Hudson 50 pitches, 35 strikes. in and score the run and now they throw it away the runners move up it gets by Posey here comes the freight train he's coming home oh he put on the brakes get back there they got him freight train were off the tracks that time and it turns into an inning ending killer for the Diamondbacks David Peralta coming around third full bore and he got halfway to home and changed his mind as the ball was rolling away from Posey toward the giant dugout. The run has scored. Peralta went a little too far. The fourth ends, it's 5-1.
Diamondbacks after the fifth inning. Diamondbacks had the bases loaded a chance to get right back in this. They can get only one on a very sloppy play executed by both clubs. Duffy has it chases it down. Goldie tags and scores. No one is backing up Posey Gonzo and then everything really goes haywire. Yeah and I think Hudson got caught up watching the play because he should have been the guy backing up Posey. He was standing between third and home. And David Peronza came around that third base bag at full steam and there was no way he was going to get back in time. Adrianza the shortstop covering and that's it. It's good to have aggressiveness but when you're down by four runs after Goldie scored you don't need to get thrown out there leave those guys in scoring position. So a 5 1 ball game as we start the fifth. It is an RBI for Lamb. 2 6 on the put out at third of Peralta. Posey gets this in the air. Here comes David on the run and he's got it. It's an eventful couple of outs for David Peralta. Well, he's got his legs loose. He was out there running around with the base pass. Nice play out there in left field. Great concentration. See the eyes right following the ball all the way into the glove. Takes a blue pit away from Buster Posey. Josh Coleman to reprove. That's the first out of the fifth. And here's Marlon Bird. There's one thing. If you've seen the Diamondbacks play all year, they're not going to give in. They're going to keep going out there and battling you till the end of the game. And Chip Hale was talking about that today. That's uh, one of the things of which he's most proud this year. This team has not quit at all. And after that Cub loss Sunday, he had a meeting, a quick one after the ball game, and reminded them that he's proud of the way that they've run everything out. And even in some games where they're not trending in the right directions, wins and loss wise, that uh, these players are still playing like that. Wanted to remind him to keep keep doing it. It has not been lost on the coaches, that's for sure. By the way, I have an update on game two of that three game Hillsboro hop series. They lost game one. So tonight, as Dijon Watson pointed out, a must win trying to force a deciding game three. Hillsboro in the third leads five nothing. Marlon Bird strikes out for the second time tonight. Hey fans, now's the time. Tweet your strongest fan photo using the hashtag AC Daddy Strong Fan. You might see your photo in a Diamondback broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. The Hops tonight taking on the Giants affiliate in the Northwest League, Salem, with 21 year old curveball artist Carlos Hernandez on the mound for the Hillsboro Hops. They're all hopped up. Here's Belt. RBI double his last time up. Now you've been to the facility at Hillsboro, right? I, I, I can never go because we're busy, but to, that boy, everybody raves about Hillsboro and what they've got going on there. Yeah, it really is. Great facility, turf field, infield, outfield, great fans. I mean, uh, these minor league ballparks that these guys go to now are just incredible facilities for all these younger players coming through the system. I'm told it's a wonderful place to catch a game. It is and you, you know you want to play in front of a lot of people. Some of these guys come from small schools high school small colleges sure. and they step out there you know it's easy to pick a, a team like University of Texas or Alabama or one of these big SEC schools to go out there and you, know, you may be playing in front of the same type of crowd but when you come from a small college and you go out there you get really excited to play in front of big crowds. D-backs have the shift on against Belt. Momenter comes inside but misses. And he's behind three and one. See Phil Gosselin, the second baseman, way out there in right. Jake Lamb, the third baseman, right in front of second base umpire Ted Barrett. Bounce that one. It's a two out walk to Brandon Belt. First walk issued by Josh. Shortstop. And that brings up the shortstop. 
A. Ray Adrianza who checked in last inning for Brandon Crawford. And Adrianza hitting only 156 this year. He has a shockingly low OPS. This is a, as low an OPS as you will ever see. Lower than some pitchers. 451. That's hard to do. OPS, of course, on base percentage plus slugging percentage. And that is really low. Tell you they like his glove out there on the field. He's been able to a very solid defender as the backup shortstop, of course, with Crawford. And not a big guy either. I mean this guy. 6'1, 170. 70 was a long time ago for me. <laughs> Junior high. I know how you feel. No, not even that. Oh, all right. Popped him up. Salty on the logo. They strand the two out walk bottom five all the way Diamondbacks trail the Giants 5-1. history Mark McGuire hit a 67th home run of the season breaking Roger Maris single season record off of Steve Traxel two Diamondbacks current Diamondbacks that are here today were on the field that day first baseman for the Cubs was Mark Grace and Dave McKay was a first base coach for the Cardinals in that game it was always painful watching Steve Traxel pitch he was the slowest of the slow played behind him one year for the Cubs ouch big yeah as Bonnie Tomas leads off the Diamondback fifth against Tim Hudson. The human rain delay. Yeah, he would not have done well with this uh, pace of play initiative. No panic. I still don't know how to feel about that. How would you know that, that whole McGuire thing? You see it and you go, eh. yeah. You know, it's just it's kind of a bummer, man. Yeah, it is. At the time, it was very exciting for the game of baseball. Oh, yeah. Brought him bed, really brought baseball back after the strike. Yep. And but after uh, everything came out, just a bad taste in everybody's mouth. After. Yeah. It's just, oh, okay. You know, you kind of move on. Chris Owings. CEO flying out his first time. Jamie Romack is on deck. Pitcher spot is due up next. There's Jamie, part of the uh, roster expansion today, just up from Reno. Center field. Pagano runs it down in the gap. So here's Romack. We've seen him earlier this year. Jamie, three for ten in his big league at bats this season, including an RBI double. 
And he had a really good year at AAA Reno this year. Look at these numbers with the aces for Phil Nevin. 284, 27 homers, 100 RBIs. He had 42 doubles. MVP type numbers. Sure are. I think one thing if our Diamondback young pitchers are watching Hudson out there work and they're realizing that uh, you're he's pitching a contact but he's making good pitches every now and then he'll make a mistake. But he's not afraid to let his defense do the work and he works fast and goes right after the hitters. 56 pitches into this game already. Well, Ryan Vogel song went back into the giant rotation when Hudson went down near the end of July. And was supposed to start this game. But Vogelsong did not pitch well. 0 and 3 and 3 starts. The ERA was double digits. And so Bruce Bochy said, well, It's fair to say that Vogelsong has had his struggles last couple of starts. So they made the decision to put Hudson back in there for this start tonight. After his two relief appearances coming off the return from the injury. And Bochy said tonight he was hoping for five or six innings from Hudson. They really weren't sure what they were going to get. But he's been terrific so far. And he works a one, two, three, fifth. He strikes out Roma. Diamondbacks trail the Giants 5 1. special group of people here tonight and led by a very good friend of the broadcast Dave Benzer the founder of the strikeout fear foundation and Dave I know you've been running camera in San Francisco for the Giants for over 30 years but tonight you're here at the ballpark with a 100 cancer survivors tell us how you got involved well I got involved uh, after chance of beating cancer I promised to myself and to God that I'd make a difference in the world and having a foundation surrounded by great people and making a, a big donation to the Virginia Piper Hospital uh, with Nancy McCutcheon and my president here, Lynn Hammersmith, we had this opportunity to bring 100 cancer survivors to the game that maybe never had a chance to do something. So we had an on-field presentation. And, um, you know, the whole message in life is that it, life is about family and friends, and the rest are, are curveballs. So I look forward to making a difference in this world and having an immediate impact program and changing waiting rooms across America to give patients to let them know they're not alone in this world. So this day is so special to me and all of us survivors in the world and all survivors in the world that you're not alone in this world. And you know what? Baseball is something great for us to come and see and getting a chance to work with so many great people. You know what? I'm thankful. I'm kind of like Lou Gehrig. I'm probably the luckiest man on earth. And I know you were you and I were talking about your ordeal and it was life changing for you and that's why you decided you had to give back. You promised yourself. I didn't just want to be a survivor with the opportunity to make a difference in the world. You need to stand up use the resources around you and you know what 
it all starts with a small donation and just plain caring. So I really care and having this opportunity and baseball has been a dream to me with an opportunity and I'm just going to continue on. And like I say you want to make a difference in the world come out and see us at strikeoutfear.org. And you too can be a part of something that's making a difference. I know they're very grateful up in Scottsdale, as you mentioned, the Virginia Piper Cancer Center today, remodeling those waiting rooms. It's important to you. What's it like for you watching a baseball game here as a fan today, not behind the camera? I'm really nervous about the cuts that they're making at home. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I really don't enjoy being a fan because I love my job and I'm very passionate to work with such great people like Mitch Juris, uh, Mitch Riggins, and. Jim Lynch and all the people I've had a chance so it's hard to be patient but what a better game. The great Vita Blue was just calling you where is he. Yeah Vita said he'd show up here you know when you're a Cy Young you kind of walk around looking like Cy Young. Dave thank you so much for sharing your story and I know those around you I got to meet some of your cancer survivor friends here out on the field and I can see how much it means to them to be here as well. Thank you Lynn. Thank you as well for being here. Thank you for Nancy McCutcheon in the Virginia Pipe Hospital. Thank you guys. Thank you for the D-backs and their generosity with these tickets and coming right on board. It, it just meant the world to people. Thank you. Dave Stewart, we love you, my brother. Yeah. You know, Dave Stewart uh, was instrumental in this as well. Dave, Lynn, thank you all so much. Guys, we'll send it back up to you again. It is strikeoutfear.org. Great job. That's your boy, right? Yeah, Dave Benzer. I mean, he was in the visiting dugout all the time, and he always interacted with the visiting guys. And right, BB loved him. I loved him. You know, just going there. You always look forward to something when you go into the ballparks. And when you got a guy like that, very energetic, always giving you the business when you come in there. That's the second out here in the sixth. You know, most of the time when you're a professional athlete, you come in, people are a little bit intimidated by you. But this guy, you fly out or strike out, he, he's working the camera. And he says, that was terrible as you walk by. So, and, and that's what made him so special. And it was fun, to, you know, to go over there because he was brutally honest with you. And this is what we, you want after yeah. you made a big out. And we love him. I think it's great what he's doing. So if, if anybody can jump on board and help him out, it would be a great thing. Keith Hessler on to take over the pitching duties after they hit for Josh Colmenter. Here's Pagan. Singleton scored in the third. He's one for three. He actually helped me get in the lineup one day. He told Freddie Gonzalez when I was with the Marlins, hey, Gonzo had a good BP. He put me in. And uh, I think I let him down that day. I think <laughs> Freddie told him that's the last time I listened to you about lineups. In the air, deep to center. AJ has it on the track. Hessler works a 1 2 3 inning. Diamondbacks trail the Giants 5 1.
Our Chevron upcoming pitching matchup. Series finale on Fox Sports Arizona. Diving back line pregame show comes your way at 6 o'clock. It's Chris Heston for the Giants and Zach Godley for the Diamondbacks. And uh, what we believe will be Zach Godley's final start this year. As they expand the rosters here in September, they'll go to a six man rotation. Chip Hale said today they sort of mapped it all out. They like the way it looks. Some of these guys are a little tired running up against innings. That's certainly the case with Zach, who has thrown twice as many innings this year. As he did last year, more than double when he was a reliever in the Cubs system. So they got to really be careful with him. So tomorrow night should be it for Zach as AJ Pollock leads off the sixth against Tim Hudson. AJ 0 for 2. Giants a five run third. As they open up that inning with five straight base hits against Chase Anderson, including home runs by Blanco and the pitcher Hudson. All five giant hitters who had base hits to lead off that inning scored. And the D backs have been trying to come back ever since. But Hudson's given up only four hits so far, one run. I'll tell you, Godley, the first time he came up, pretty impressive. I think he had everybody in the ballpark, Diamondbacks organization, the fans all excited. Those three starts were outstanding, and it, Chip said after he had a rough time at Wrigley Field over the weekend, they were worried that he'd be a little too amped up, a little too hyped to pitch against the team that drafted him and traded him. And Zach did seem to be overthrowing a bit at Wrigley Field. Adrianza with a nice play at shortstop, takes a base hit away from Pollock. Nice play here. He just reads it well, makes a nice diving play. Tough luck right there for AJ Pollock leading off the inning. AJ 0 for 3. Here's Phil Goslin getting a start at second base. Goslin was saying after his big game yesterday that you know we're in September and all the evaluators are here watching and looking and he's making a very strong impression in his first games with the Diamondbacks but you know every player wants to show what he can do going into the offseason but for Phil it's a little bit of a unique situation because as he said this is the last impression he'll make heading into the winter but at the same time it's the first impression that he's making because it's our first chance to see him he's been out all year with a thumb injury. Yeah, and I think everybody's pretty much impressed with him. He's had some good quality at bats ever since he's been up here in the big leagues. He's looked very good, that's for sure. But down one and two against Hudson. Sanderson Ford bullpen. Enrique Burgos. Diamondbacks have already had to use five pitchers in the bowl game. Two and two now on Goslin. Only on deck. Giants bullpen busy too. Well, George Contos pitch in the series opener yesterday. And Goslin strikes out. Third strikeout for Hudson. Two down. Hey, D backs fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between 4 and 6 p.m. the following day at participating locations. Goldie singled and scored his last time up one for two. See if we can get some some runs here so I can cheese it up tomorrow. Go give me some tacos, put a lot of cheese on it. That's why you don't weigh 170 <laughs> pounds anymore. <laughs> Just go right up to the counter, say cheese it up for me. <laughs> yeah, one we'll say those are reserved for Mr. Brenly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that 170 passed me a while back. <laughs> Boy, Tim Hudson so far has given up just one run, four hits. He's worked five and two third, only 70 pitches, 50 strikes. Just a very classic Tim Hudson effort here tonight. He's being very careful with the goalie. He's behind now, 3 0. 
We saw that one he hit earlier just rocketed right by him. And there for a strike three and one. Hudson 40 years old his 17th season in the big leagues. He's in the second year of the two year twenty three million dollar deal he signed before last season. Wound up with his first World Series ring last year. He's just trying to bring it to you. But now at 40 the contract is up at the end of the year so this is likely going to be it he says. He'll end where he began in the Bay Area. He dropped the breaking ball in there. Tim Hudson has retired seven straight through six. He's got a 5 1 lead. Is brought to you in part by your Valley Honda dealers, where you'll get more standard features for less money. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Mix One, great taste, no face, available at local retailers. The Arizona Sky, as we start the seventh, Tim Hudson with a 5 1 lead. He's retired the last seven. He's faced, he's got four strikeouts. Keith Hessler back out there for the Diamondbacks and Joe Panic will lead it off. So far, classic Tim Hudson, one run, four hits, six innings, no walks and four Ks. Joe Panic has walked and doubled. He's got an RBI. He scored a run. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. He backs bullpen stays busy here. A lot of pitchers from which to choose with the September rosters expanded, and they might need all of them here tonight. And Joe Panic, this guy's a problem and figures to be for a while. Been crushing the D backs this year. 13 games against Arizona. He's hitting 412 with six extra base hits, and he had an RBI double in the third tonight. Amazing how much he resembles Buster Posey physically. I mean, he just looks like him, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, these guys uh, they're kind of the same mold. They just they're just hard nosed players. They know how to play the game the right way. They do all the little things. I mean, there it is. Great job by our crew here. Look at that. Same barber, everything. <laughs> <laughs> when you were playing, did you have? And some of these guys fly guys in to cut their hair, right? Some of these. Celebrity barbers think get flown in they do the whole team. No, I uh, I think Chip Hale Derek Hall myself. There's about six or seven guys now use Phil the barber over by spring training. We all go to the same guy over Phil? there. Phil. Yeah, he's got a ton of bar uh, bobbleheads in his place. He's a big D backs guy. So we uh, we all go there and 
He always texts Chip after games whenever he gets a lucky haircut. <laughs> when I was with the Marlins, I'll tell you what, that was some scary guys cutting hair over there. They'd put lines in your head if you wanted them and all kinds of. Oh, yeah, they do the whole thing. They put emblems in your. Yeah, it's not Phil's barbershop down there. I stayed away from Some guys that can cut some hair with art. Third baseman Matt Duffy. Chip Hale will make a pitching change here. We are told that Brandon Crawford left the ball game. The Giants shortstop with tightness in his left calf and hip, so he was removed as a precaution. And Chip Hale removes his pitcher. Enrique Burgos coming in. Five-one Giants in the seventh. Back after this. in the ball game it's the data strong fan photo is that smelly cat grumpy cat a lot of cats around here lately tweet your strongest fan photo using the hashtag AZ data strong fan for your chance to have your picture shown on our diamondback broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile the right hander Enrique Burgos out there to face Matt Duffy grumpy cat created quite a quite a buzz well, around here yesterday huh? all he's the national in, Internet sensation. All they the tell national me. News this morning. Was it? Talking about him. Yeah. Grumpy Cat's a big deal. Apparently. I'm not sure why, but he seems to be. Got an update from Hillsboro. A must win playoff game two for the Hops, trying to force a deciding game three. They're up 6 nothing. Fly ball, right center field. Pollock. The pool has it. Two down. Grant Heyman, the offensive star there, three for three so far in the ball game. And Carlos Hernandez threw four innings, seven strikeouts, no walks with that big curveball. Here's Jody. Well, guys, I just had to check in with Matt Duffy today about his cat Skeeter and what Matt thought of a uh, grumpy cat. He said, "Well, Skeeter is just way bigger." And I know if you guys have seen that picture, you know that is a large cat that Matt Duffy owns. But one thing that Duffy told me that was also quite interesting, guys, the fact that you know what. He's a guy who's playing 125 games this year, and last year he was just called up and observing. And he said after Sunday's game at Colorado, you know, they did have a meeting. They talked about pushing through this final month, having no regrets, making a push for a playoff spot. And he said, the key for me is to just not think about how my body feels. Like, it's obvious, you know, Matt talked about, look, we're all worn out, but we have to push through. And him playing a first, his first full season, he just can't think about how you feel if you have soreness or various things going on. He's had a wonderful rookie year. He'll certainly be a top rookie of the year candidate, Matt Duffy. Here's Marlon Bird. Duffy leading all National League rookies with a 303 batting average coming in. Leads all NL rookies in hits. And that, have you seen that cat, Skeeter? It's like the size of a horse. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's, it's, it's horrifying. 
haven't seen it, you should. It's Skeeter, it, it's it's uh, well, it's just a giant cat. I'm sure, he's a popular cat out in San Francisco, right? <laughs> I don't think he's the internet sensation that uh, Grumpy Cat is. Well, Grumpy Cat is one of our very own here out of Arizona. Think globally, act locally. <laughs> One and two. There's Grumpy Cat. Looks grumpy. Got his own uni and everything. Grumpy Cat's big. Baxter's never grumpy. He's never a grumpy cat. He's a cool cat. That <laughs> one. Two and two on Marlon Bird. Bird 0 for three. He struck out twice. Where was that pitch? Oh, pretty good pitch at the bottom corner. More times than not, though, if the catcher's got to move a little bit from where he's set up, more times the umpire will not call that. Way up in the air. Left center. Owens Peralta. That one almost hit the roof. Virgo strands the two out single. Stretch time at Chase. D backs down 5 1. A classic Tim Hudson performance here tonight at the age of 40. Yeah, he did a great job hitting his spots, location, throwing that slider down and away, coming back in. Just get the hitters thinking about certain pitches, start guessing up there. 74 pitches, six innings. A run on four hits, he went six, no walks, four strikeouts, retired the last seven he faced. Now he'll give way to the giant bullpen. And on for San Francisco, the left hander, Josh Osich, 27 year old. Opponent hitting 181 against him, his 24th appearance of the year. And it's been a good year for Osich. David Peralta, Jared Salta, Lamakia, Jake Lamb scheduled hitters here in the Arizona seventh, down 5 1. Well, this is go time for the Diamondbacks. They got to try to scrap some guys on base, try to get some runs. Getting late. 96 from the left side. Yeah, wow. throws hard. David single his last time up. He's one for two. He's now hit in seven straight. And 15 of his last 17. Batting during that stretch about 390. It is raining outside. A lot of rain in Yuma tonight. It's raining here in downtown Phoenix. Remember the last time we saw Josh Osich. It was raining on his head. 
here at Chase Field. We had a monsoon outside. Right back at him. And there's just a tremendous amount of water. And it looked a little something like this. It was raining in one spot right on top of the pitcher. With everything closed, of course, and it just made a mess. And he was wondering, what, what's, what's the deal? That was a lot of water that night. It really was. So it's a little more dry out there tonight for him. Here's Salty. You play out in San Francisco, you used to different conditions out there, a lot of cold wind. Yeah, what's a little rain? Seagulls. Oh, the seagulls. There will come a time where they start to attack. <laughs> I mean, they're right, they're pushing it right now. They're close. I always laugh because behind the left field stands is a player parking lot for the Giants. Yeah. So they had to cover it. Well, yeah, and otherwise it gets messy. That's where they throw out all the garlic fries they don't sell. So the Seagulls love that spot. 96. One and one now. Two balls and a strike. Salty 55 games with the Diamondbacks this year. He's hitting just over 230 with four homers. Two and two. And Salty's another one of those guys at the end of the season. Figure out what his role is going to be on this team because he's done a great job pinch hitting for the ball club. Seven for 21 as a pinch hitter this year. That's a 333 average. They get this one around. Deep to left. There it goes. And gone. Trying to get back in this thing. Jared Saltalabakia. That's his sixth. Tell you what, Gonzo, for Salty, who's the switch hitter, that right hand side has been a power side for him lately. Yeah, it really has. And you know, he's really come into his own here this second half of the season. He's really starting to feel comfortable here. Six homers for Salty, five with the D backs. He got all that one. So it's a 5 2 ball game with one out in the seventh. And here's Jake Lamb. It's been one of the things about Oscar Hernandez, and we've talked about this, Gonzo, the fact that you've got Oscar back there as the Rule 5 pick who has to be on the roster. Normally, you wouldn't be able to use your backup catcher like Chip Hale has been able to use Salta Lamakia this year as a pinch hitter, you know, midway through the ball game somewhere. Well, in one way, having Oscar hamstrings the bench a little bit, but on the other hand, it's freed up the manager to use the backup catcher. Yeah, it really has. And I think uh, for Hernandez, the benefit for him being up here, just the exposure of being able to watch, hasn't got a lot of playing time, but he's been able to see and, and uh, learn from the other two catchers that are big league guys that have been around a little bit. He's headed for the seats. They'll give it a look. Long run for Duffy, but he's in the seats. Hey, fans. Introducing Pepsi Limon made with just a hint of real lime juice. That means Pepsi Limon has a little bit of lime and a whole lot of flavor. Pick up yours today, now available at your local retailer. Getting back to Hernandez, he's going to be able to go to Arizona Fall League, and I think mm -hmm. that's going to help him a lot because he's going to play against some of the guys his age and his class because he was forced to come up from A ball. Never played above A ball to be in the big leagues. Oscar's still a baby, just turned 22 in July. Was playing a ball in the Tampa Bay system last year. Lamb can't hold up, and there's the strikeout. Two down in the seventh. I think the valley with Salta Lamac is the simple fact that he's a switch hitter. And he's responded well to the pinch hitting role. That's a tough, that's a tough gig for a lot of guys, but he seems to have done pretty well with it. 
And that's going to be it for Josh Osich, who will come out of the ball game now. Bruce Bochy making a long, slow walk out there. You've got the bottom of the order coming up for the Diamondbacks, trying to get back in what is now a 5-2 game. We'll see Asmani Tomas when we come back. Weekday, America's pregame brings live reports from the biggest game to get you ready for all the action. You can catch America's pregame at 2 o'clock only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Bruce Bochy has gone to his bullpen. Thanks to the right hand hitting Yasmani Tomas. It's the right hand throwing Hunter Strickland. Tomas 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out. Gonzo, what have you seen from Yasmani Tomas over the uh, second half of the year as we look at the numbers on Hunter Strickland? Well, you know, last year he didn't play at all. So this is his first, you know, this year is the first time he's played in a while. And I think the last, I would say, month and a half, I don't know if it's fatigue that has started to settle in. His, his swings, everything has changed a little bit. How so? A lot more strikeouts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously the power numbers aren't there where we were anticipating coming out of camp. Everybody, you know, raved about this guy he was going to hit, you know, 20 plus 30. But, you know, sitting with eight home runs, 43 RBIs, 282. The the batting average is very respectable. I think, uh, you know, this was a good test for him this year. And hopefully in the offseason he's going to work hard and try to get back stronger, bigger and stronger. And he strikes out. Strickland throwing 98. So the Diamondbacks get one of the salty homer and through seven they trail at five two.
Cox gig live high speed highlights as we open up the eighth inning here at Chase Field. D backs trail the Giants 5 2. Gonzo, look at Brandon Belt the way he holds the bat. There's been a lot of talk about his swing changes. It's changed a lot physically, but he's lined up his knuckles differently. Uh, Looks like he wraps the bat a little bit. He's using more fingertips, and the knuckles on his hands line up differently. It's a little more relaxed grip, he says. He's got a nice loose grip and just kind of drops that bat head down there. He's also moved back in the batter's box. He's gone through a whole evolution, really, as a hitter, and it's uh, worked out. Yeah, and I think the longer you play in this league, you're going to make adjustments. You know, I. I was one of those guys I like to hit as far back in the batter's box. I made my adjustments with my stride, how I spread out in the batter's box. If there was a guy that was really tough on me. I relied on my leg kick. Ergo strikes him out. Yeah, he's worked a lot with Hensley Mullins, their hitting coach, on his mechanics. And an RBI double early in the ball game. Our Gila River game summary. Well, it's all about that five run giant third against Chase Anderson. The first five Giants batters in the third inning had base hits. All five scored. The first two were homers. Blanco let off the third with a solo homer. And then Tim Hudson, the pitcher, as they went back to back, the eight and nine hitters for the Giants. Homer. Pagan singled, Panic doubled, Duffy singled. And just like that, it was five nothing. And Chase Anderson was done early. It's been a bullpen game ever since. Burgos is the fifth relief pitcher used by Chip Hale tonight. And here's A. Ray Adrianza. Checked in at shortstop for Brandon Crawford. Crawford had some left calf tightness and a sore left hip, so they took him out of the ballgame as a precaution. Center. AJ Pollock two down. Hey D backs fans, keep up with the pennant races in a true HD quality on MLB.tv Premium. Watch every out of market game live on more than 400 supported devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widgets, and more. Visit MLB.tv today. Giants have got to have this one. They are trying to catch the Dodgers, at least keep pace right now. Dodgers leading the Angels 6 1 in the sixth inning. Here's Gregor Blanco. Giants kind of limping to the finish line here. You go back to the middle of August, Bruce Bochy and company were only two and a half games behind the division lead. But since then, the Giants have lost 14 of their last 21, eight of their last 10. And they went from two and a half behind in the middle of last month to eight and a half back to start playing tonight. And the Dodgers are winning. Well, I think if you're the Giants, what you have to do is you have to try to maintain and stay close enough because you know you still have those head to head games against the Dodgers. And you can make a push right there and hope that your team is hot and you get some of your veteran guys back. But if you start losing these other games, you fall too far behind. That Dodger team can get hot and run away with it. There you go. 7 and 14 for the Giants. 12 and 7 for the Dodgers ever since August 16. 95. Burgos throwing hard tonight. 2 and 2 on Blanco. Big game in the NL East. Mets had a big deficit to come back against the Nationals. Washington hosting that game. They were leading Matt Harvey and the Mets, a game they absolutely had to have, and they blew the lead. Mets came all the way back and won it 8 7. So they're now six up in the NL East. Good inning there for Enrique Burgos, a 1 2 3 8. Diamondbacks trail the 5 2.
it after the ball game here tonight. Brandon Webb will, will look at the starting pitcher's long night in a, in a short way for Chase Anderson. We'll talk about him, but this was vintage Tim Hudson, was it not? Yeah, we talked about earlier if he had his two seam working and down the zone, it'd be a tough night for the D backs. And boy, he, he really had it going tonight. Lots of ground balls. D backs just driving the ball on the ground. Hiccup in one inning, but pretty much cruised throughout the whole game. We'll take a closer look at that and so much more. Diamondbacks Live, Steve and Luis, right after you're done here tonight, we'll send it back to you. If only we had a good sinker baller to analyze Tim Hudson. Wait, what? Sergio Romo. Got a perfect guy in Webby back there talking sinker. Chris Owings leads off the eighth. Romo has really uh, kind of figured it out as of late. He was struggling earlier this year, but he's been much better lately. And sure enough, that's Adrian's at shortstop. And quickly one down here in the eighth. Sergio Romo, he's given up only one run in his last 20 appearances, and that ERA is coming down. It's a 3 1 1. And now Ender and Ciarte will hit for the pitcher. Pitch for Enrique Burgos. Ender. Number five. Enrique Needed a mental Ciarte. day today, Chip Hale felt. So Ender out in the starting lineup. He's been scuffling a little bit lately. 292 and four homers. So he is a two for his last 20 at the plate. He still got respectable numbers, and he definitely would like to get back on track here this last couple of weeks of the season. Well, he seemed to hit a wall not too long ago, mostly at Wrigley Field. Trips on the first one along the left field line. Blanco has it very quickly, two down. Yeah, Ender had a 15 game stretch during which he hit better than 340, but ever since then, two for 21. Center field, A.J. Pollock. Here's A.J. Pollock go for three. Two pitches, two out so far. Told you he was better lately. You know what team is making a big run right now? We're looking around the league. The Cubs. Rizzo homered his 100th of his career. Cubbies won in St. Louis 8-5. Pirates won though. Chicago trying to catch Pittsburgh and host that wild card game. Hey, you're exactly right. That Chicago Cubs team, they're they're sitting right where they want to be right now, getting hot at the right time. Nice backhand stop by Duffy at third. That's three outs on three pitches. No make it four. Four pitches. We'll go to the ninth to chase. Attention. Chase Anderson, who had pitched a very good first and second inning, comes out for the third. Blanco leads off of the homer. Then Hudson, they go back to back, eight and nine. And then the floodgates opened up. Pagan singled, Panic doubled, Duffy singled. The first five reach with base hits, they all score. And 
that was the end of the night for Chase. Yeah. He went two plus. It really was. I mean, he couldn't get any got anybody out that inning. The first five guys coming up. Not only that, but he just left the ball elevated too much in that inning. Couldn't get anything down. David Hernandez, the right-hander, on to work the giant ninth. Pitcher spot will lead it off for San Francisco. Alejandro de Gaza. We saw him last night. We'll hit for the pitcher. De Gaza 262. He's played for three different teams this year. Those are his numbers in the National League. He's only got 11 at bats with the Giants. They picked him up August 31st from the Red Sox. And he singled as a pinch hitter here yesterday. And there's another Angel Hernandez fan. Discussion about whether he went. He also had a good year in Baltimore, maybe last year or a couple years ago. And his best years with the White Sox two years ago That's in Chicago, in fact. Yeah, he had 264, 17 homers. He stole 20 bases. And played pretty well during a 60 game run with the Red Sox this year. Hit 292 in Boston. They picked him up uh, as a left hand bat for the stretch run. Began the year with the Orioles, dealt to Boston in June. Giants picked him up about a week or so ago. And he rolls it to Goldie. Hernandez covers one away. It seems to me like the Giants were looking for any types of veteran guys out there and hoping they can catch lightning in a bottle, one of these guys to jumpstart him. You know, Marlon Bird did when he first got here. Sure did. He's homered three times. We saw the Cubs do the same thing. We were at Wrigley Field over the weekend. They've picked up a lot of guys, Austin Jackson, people like that. Hey, fans, play Kachinko by signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Arizona Diamondbacks regular season home game. Pagan singled and scored in that five run third. He's one for four. And it looks like uh, Angel and Angel Gonzo have worked out their differences over the course of the ball game. You've been monitoring that situation. Yeah. I, I actually thought uh, he was going to get run earlier. He. I think Angel Hernandez was saying there was only going to be one angel in the ballpark, so he was going to throw him <laughs> out, but he ended up staying in there. Well, a five run third will help cool you off a little bit. Series finale here tomorrow night. Zach Godley for the Diamondbacks and Chris Heston for the Giants. And what is looking like the rubber game of the three game series. Diamondback live pregame show at 6 o'clock on Fox Sports Arizona. First pitch 640. One and two. Right. But God's another one of those guys. He doesn't hide his emotions when he's out there on the field. Crazy horse they call him. He missed much of last month with an inflamed right knee. That had nagged him all year long. He's out 20 games, got back September 1st, and since he's returned, he's hit 360. And he started to look over the last week or so like the Angel Pagan that was the real engine that made them go at the top of the lineup when they won that 2012 World Series. This is lifted to right center. Available for AJ. Joe Panic now. Diamondbacks in the bottom of the ninth, down three right now. We'll have Goslin, Goldie, and Peralta, two, three, and four. Dodgers right now leading at Anaheim, 6 1 in the seventh. Giants need this one to keep pace. Eight and a half back. Panic one for two. He is a uh, walked. 
An RBI double. He scored a run. He's been hit by a pitch. Now at 3-12 on a year. You got to think Joe Pan is going to be one of those guys. If there's any kind of little setback, they may give him a day off here and there. But he's going to be out there for the most part. And he drives this one toward the pool, and it is in the pool. Joe Panic, his eighth, and it's 6 2. <laughs> Missed 34 games with back trouble. Hadn't played since August 1st. Had a pinch hit double yesterday. And a home run here tonight. Almost had a splash down. What do you think Bruce Bochy's thinking in there, hoping to get a couple of his other guys back, knowing the impact that Panic and Pence, all those guys making his lineup. Mm -hmm. Do it for Skeeter, Matt Duffy. Here's an artist rendering of the giant cat. Apparently, uh, Skeeter's eating a hot dog. Would explain the, the obesity. <laughs> you think she's got a cat? Or or nine? I'm sure. <laughs> Look at her. You know, the boyfriend or the husband, whatever, he's kind of taking one for the team here. Let her do her thing. <laughs> The Skeeter sign. Three balls and a strike on Duffy. He had an RBI single and scored in that five run giant third. Do you ever have a cat? Nope, not a pet guy in my house. Sorry. No pets allowed. No huh? pets. We got too much going on. Well, having seen Skeeter, I, I don't blame you. Take out a loan to feed Skeeter. You do. One gets away from Salty. He's on it. Long throw, but he's got Duffy to complete the strikeout. Giants get the panic homer. They add one more. It's 6 2. Checks in at 170 pounds. He's 6'2", 170. Skeeter close to 170. That is Skeeter, the, the, the cat. The fat cat in this case. The cat's got uh, Duffy by about 20, doesn't he? <laughs> the, the very definition of a, of a corporate fat cat. And there is the Duff man and Skeeter on the T-shirt. And she's a big Skeeter fan. The boyfriend apparently not so much. Yeah, he's getting beat up by the sign there. She's flapping it around. He's getting beaten up emotionally as well. 
Santiago Casilla. 32 for 37 in his save opportunities out there with a 6 2 lead. And he'll work to Phil Goslin, Paul Goldschmidt, and David Peralta 2 3 and 4 in the Diamondback ninth. Now these are the at bats where these young players got to take them serious here and try to, to get their hits whenever they can. Try to get a rally started. Need some base runners. Goslin 0 for 3. Todd Walsh, Brandon Webb standing by. Diamondback Live post game show right after our ball game. Reaction from the clubhouse. Series finale here tomorrow night. Zach Godley and Chris Heston. Hey, one thing about Chase Anderson. He's going to stand up there in front of his locker and answer every single question that's asked of him. It was a rough night for Chase. There's no getting around that. And there's no nice way of letting him off the hook there, but he will stand up and he will answer every question. He's yeah, absolutely. He's a stand up guy, and that's, you know, I think that's what the fans respect and, yeah. and your teammates. And you, you take one on the chin there, you, you got to own up to it. You're going to go out there. You can't hide. I mean, everybody here at the ballpark and at home watching the game saw what happened. He got roughed up in that third inning, and that's going to happen. A promising start came to a disappointing end because he uh, looked good through the first two innings. I think Chip saw the wheels coming off real fast and tried to get that bullpen in there to try to salvage the inning and hold it at four or five runs. And he used both uh, Silvino Bracho and Matt Reynolds to close out that third, get those three outs. But Chase had three strikeouts through the first two innings. He had retired five in a row going into the third. And then five in a row had base hits for the Giants to open up the inning. Two and two on Goslin. The pitching star for the Diamondbacks tonight was uh, Carlos Hernandez, who made the critical playoff game two start for the Hillsboro Hops. And boy, he had that curveball working. We heard a lot about Carlos Hernandez's curveball tonight. Six and a third, gave up just three hits, 12 strikeouts. And the hops lead that game 8 0. This is in the air to right near the line. Long run for Bird. And he tracks it down for the first time. Diamond back live post game show is next on Fox Sports Arizona. Brandon Webb will let a pretty good sinker ball himself. We'll take a look at Tim Hudson's sinker here tonight. Goldie singled and scored in the fourth. One for three. I, I would like to say I think you've been a little hard on Webby in his defense. <laughs> Earlier. You were you were giving it to him pretty good. Well, that's what position guys do to pitchers well, once in a while. It's a fair point. But he gets in there. He gets in there nose to nose with it. He, he oh, doesn't back not, down. He's not afraid. Oh, he's yeah. not afraid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get in the books, Gonzo. I don't I don't know about this the seven for sixteen if that's legit or if that you just made that up. No, I think it was uh, 333 or something like that. <laughs> for you against him? Yeah, absolutely. You had Webby, huh? Yeah. Wow. A, cu a couple ties, couple big hits. I'll get our somewhat reliable staff on that. Uh, Webby, we can confirm those numbers are accurate. You can confirm? Yeah, I need I need confirmation. Yeah, well, you got it. We looked it up. It's oh, true. Okay. All right. Well, I hate to break it to you, but <laughs> I, I did. I hit a triple against him. That he's lucky we were in a big ballpark because I would have been in the seats in a normal ballpark. <laughs> if you were at at age at all, you would have had it in the parker because that's the deepest park ever. Which one was that? In, in uh, Miami. Miami. Oh, the football stadium. Football stadium. Mind you, I did that at the age of 40 when he was what? What were you? 21, 22? <laughs> Just for the fans. And this it, wasn't a, it wasn't a father-son game either. It was me going up against the in, in a big league game. This is the way it's gone between you two this whole series, and it, frankly, it's making me a little uncomfortable. Hey, le leave him alone. Lightning. Yeah, just just leave him alone. You see, I, I agree with you, Todd. Okay, it's yeah. getting a little uh, yeah, over on. the top. Goldie strikes out. I'm the enforcer, okay? Hey, I, take I appreciate care of that, yeah. 
Okay, Todd, so somebody's got my back. Todd Walsh skating in to goon it up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> got a five-game suspension coming. That's all right. I, uh, you know, Todd, I've often thought of you as the John Wensink of pre- and post-game <laughs> hosts. Oh, yeah. Uh, Webby, by the way, we have triple check this. Gonzo, career against you, six for 18, one triple, only three strikeouts. Three strikeouts. That's pretty good. You got him three times. That's pretty good. He I, mean, I, I, li I like the guy when I play with him, so I wanted to flip him a bone every now and then. You know, he was, he was getting old. He wasn't getting a lot of hits. He was getting days. Oh, He was man. getting old. I'll tell you what. Six for 18. I was 40 years old. I think I sent a limo to come get you to bring you to the ballpark to make sure you were getting here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> Only one on Peralta. David had a single in the fourth, so he's now got a seven game hitting streak. This is where you pull his jersey over his head and then you pound That's on right. him. That's okay? right. Like beating down. Yeah. Like Stan Jonathan back in the day in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> the French and Indian War. I just have Guy Lafleur scoring all our goals. Don't worry about it. I got it. I'll all take right, care. You got it. I'm <laughs> done. I can cut my mic down. Put it. Put it down. You got me. We have the last laugh. We're on. We're the last line. We here. just won't be quiet. Mariola Kida Canada. Two and one. <laughs> Suddenly it's a four-man booth. This is. Uh, this helps. Oh, by the way, Webby, that triple that I hit, uh -oh. uh, you were 9-0 and at the time. Ooh. And uh, that, that was the game winner, 3-1. That, that was, yeah, that was a, that was a, I give him that one, Steve. That was a big one. All right. It was a big game. I was 9-0 and going for some kind oh, of Webby, you know, Webby, I'm proud of you because one of you had to be the bigger man, and, and naturally <laughs> it was you. Yeah, Absolutely. of course. Yeah, you really stepped up there. Yeah, I admire you. It's, it took up a lot of a lot of intestinal fortitude to own up to that one. He was standing on top of that Kentucky mountain. I had to knock him off. Oh, I was <laughs> mad that it was him too. Oh, I had to be. And when you hit that, what were you? Sixty? I was sixty, and I was <laughs> fist pumping when I got the third on. Yeah, Webby. he was. <laughs> well, Webby should have just drilled him the next time. I may come up high and tie it on him. That that must have been horrible playing baseball in that football stadium. Yeah, well, well football when there was football, but when we were playing baseball, there was no fans there anyway. And yeah. Well, there's still not a whole lot now in the new ballpark. Two and two, two outs. at first. Ron Pennington is on that one. Well, I tell you, Peralta will play the game hard until this ball game's over. He does it all the time. He'll roll out. It did earlier to the pitcher. Ran it hard all the way down the line. Scott Chan working the right field line. Ron has left field tonight. You're right. Battling here. Two and two. Two outs. Bottom nine. Strike three, and that's the ball game. Angel Hernandez rings up Peralta. So we end the game really as we began it. With a lot of angst over the plate umpire, but really not part of the storyline as this one was all Giants. They win it 6 2. Well, Gonzo, uh, still a chance to win the series. Come back tomorrow, game three. Zach Godley and Chris Heston, but uh, this one unraveled in a hurry on Chase Anderson in that five run giant third. Yeah, it really did. He left a couple balls up in the strike zone, wasn't able to recuperate, and you know, didn't give his defense really a lot of chances in that inning. They were hitting the ball either over the fence or in the gap. So uh, for Chase Anderson, this, this is one of the games that you got to put behind you. He probably has another start left. Hopefully he can get back out there and regroup and uh, take that into the offseason. But other than that, this was a, a rough outing for him in the third inning. Well, I'd like to give you an opportunity now, Gonzo, to regroup because I know you're going to be on the Diamondback Live postgame show. You and Webby can continue the discussion. But uh, right, right now, let's throw it over to Todd Walsh, Todd. Yes, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, and we will, by the way. And I just yes. want to throw you a ball right now. I'm just right, going to tell you, you I, I, I'm not going to give it all away. 
you will have the last laugh on Luis Gonzalez tomorrow. I like it. That's all I'm going to say. I love it. Thank you. You have a very special day tomorrow, all about you. Really? And it's going to it's going to floor him. Wow. That's tomorrow. When we come back in just a minute or two, we will begin Diamondbacks Live, the post game show, and I'm very interested to get. Brandon's uh, take with video support of Tim Hudson and his sinker tonight. We'll also talk about what happened to Chase Anderson and what it's like to, to exit the game so early as a starting pitcher. And that's not all. Jody Jackson is down at field level and should be inside the Diamondbacks clubhouse. We'll hear from Chip Bale and it will get chippy again between Luis and Brandon, I am sure. But I promise you, Brandon, you'll have the last laugh tomorrow, not tonight.